Hello y'all, this is the Red Flood mod for Hearts Iron 4, the alternative history mod where no one won World War 1. We're playing Armenia, a young and powerful nation that has become one of the great powers of the Black Sea and Caspian, monopolizing oil production and controlling its own colony. The country has defeated Turkey, who was looking to take its lands, and now stands as a beacon of democracy for all. Unusual in such a radicalized world. Starting off, we have no national spirit, so let's look at the focus. We have a fragile democracy, business as usual, and then something over to the right. Something definitely normal and not terrible at all. Looking at the army, we got two infantry, two mountain divisions, and two cavalry divisions. And no navy and a single fighter wing. Moving to our options as commanders, we have tons of generals and not a single field marshal in the whole lot of them. In the research tree, we have up-to-date weapons, motorized, no support weapons, no tanks, no basic artillery, but up-to-date fighters. That colony mentioned earlier is Central Caspia. It is a puppet of Armenia, and it is a former part of Azerbaijan. A socialist dissident is carrying information on something very vile. It is the Operation Diamond Knife, which was done in what was former Azerbaijan, aka Central Caspia, to ensure Armenia's dominance over the area by, let's just say, being very awful toward races they didn't like, which, of course, very bad. It's going to get very much worse when it is revealed. Cause that information was revealed, that will close off part of the tree having Garage and Nersida saving Armenia. With the atrocities revealed, unrest erupts across the nation like wildfire. Pell militaries fight one another in the capital. Different political groups take separate views on the matter, one being more particularly terrible than the others. Garajan and his party moved to save Armenia by demanding the parliament to be dissolved and have them hand over power to him so that he may root out the pawns of communist Germany. With the leadership changes, Armenia got a new flag and Garajan, the CD, is the leader of the nation. We get some text explain his backstory, but basically within the narrative of Red Flood, he is a controversial figure in the country, seen as an extreme ultra-nationalist and violent chauvinist by many in the socialist political establishment, and a national hero by his Tisakakronist. With his ascension to power, the opinion of the former won't be around much longer. For the educational part about the real man, the city was an Armenian statesman and strategist. He is widely regarded as a national hero by his people. He was instrumental in forming the Republic of Mountainous Armenia, an anti-Bolshevik state, which later fell to the Soviet Union in 1921. In World War II, he backed Germany by assisting the Armenian Legion of the Wehrmacht, hoping if they succeeded in conquering the USSR, it would lead to Armenian independence. With that explained, I'm going to talk about the Siga Kronism, the political movement he founded, which focused on a renewal of spiritual, behavioral, and cultural identity of the Armenians. Basically, from what I could find in English, this movement is also seen by some as an ideology resembling Germany, under Hitler's control and divided Armenians into three different groups. The Sekamards are carrier of the ideology for the Armenian people. The Zogarvards are swinging and Hesnan groups of Armenians. And the Takank is basically apostates and traitors. So this mod takes these ideas and cranks both it and the individual who created them up to 11 into the person we have here who Popot will be taking notes from. We're going to go with the Great Battle, then the Cult of Violence, cause peace is too much, then to Sieg Paramilitaries. Everyone's being conscripted. The conscription law jumps from volunteers only to service by requirement. At this rate, not even the people in the graveyards will be safe from being forced into the army. Garajin admires one of his 80-year-old soldiers because they would be a martyr. Truly, it is a paradise on earth in this country. To distract from whatever our nation is morphing into, let's take a look at the wars around the world. That is a lot. There's already five in 1936, but that's normal for this mod. After completing a gun for every man, let's take a look at more focuses, mass internal purges, and executing partisans, because it, it just keeps getting worse, doesn't it? The Tasig paramilitary's national spirit is very nice, and we're building up our military thanks to the help of the senior citizens. In Asia, the Anhui clique fights the Xinjiang Autonomous Province. Their confidence must be sky high, because now they're going to fight two nations at the same time. Besides all the blatant crimes against humanity, we can tell that our leader is very much normal and not at all a sadist. We're going to declare a war on Turkey because unfortunately for them in this timeline, they seem to have lost a lot of their territory in the west. The first assaults are going very well because their army seems to be in another location. Anarchists cause trouble in Hamburg, but that doesn't matter. The rest of the Turkish army has arrived and we're losing ground. 
We were repulsed and pushed back, but we are now at least winning a couple battles. The United States joins the Intimarium because, I don't know, I guess they just want to all take out Moldova. Liberia takes on the UK, and even though we're using Alberta Visions, we are winning a single battle. While the war has been going down, we've been trying to build up Armenia's industry. Fiomi is declaring war on the Kingdom of Italy, so they're fighting, and so Italy will be losing that peace they have in Turkey to them. Very nice, we made a breakthrough and may trap a few of the enemy divisions. The original encirclement failed, but it doesn't matter because we did manage to trap a few at their southern border. We've had a lot of casualties, mainly because there's been nothing but all-out assaults in a lot of battles instead of just picking them off one at a time. We gotta be more careful because we're running out of manpower. Industry focus is done, let's move to the Air Force. The Intimarium is fighting the Russian Empire, the United States left the faction, but somehow they got the help of Venezuela and Mexico? We broke through their lines in the north, and now we're going to swing down and cut them off from their port and supplies. One cavalry division was able to make it to their objective, and now there's a lot of Turkish divisions behind our lines. One of our units was destroyed in the offensive, but overall it had the desired effect. We're moving deeper into Turkey. The conflict is over. We'll annex all of their land. Turkey was a very tough opponent, even though our country is on service by requirement. I think we would have lost the war of attrition in the long run. Across to Black Sea, the Intimarium is making progress in the south, but seem to be losing ground in the north in Belarus. Annihilate the Kabkaz, focus is complete. The Kabkaz society is our northern neighbor, and they are essentially a accelerationist Georgia. Our foe is heavily outnumbered and have very few troops, if not any, on their flanks. We'll just come in and take everything from behind while they're pinned down on the front. With that war currently going on, let's justify on our southern neighbor, Azerbaijan. While we're positioning for our next fight, avant-garde France declares war on Germany causing a big war in Europe, as they always do in this mod. Austrian Reich declares war on Yugoslavia. They'll probably be dragging in Bohemia, Moravia. The United Kingdom steps in and guarantees the nation we were going to attack. Since the United Kingdom blocked that war, let's try justifying on Assyria and Kurdistan to see if they will stop that as well. In Africa, the Prussian Congo may lose to Kivu. The Armenian naval tree has some creative names, to say the least, and a focus that would have nerfed Turkey, which I forgot to get before we warred them. So if I understand this correctly, the Austrian Reich attacked Switzerland, who joined the Third International, so now they're fighting Germany and Yugoslavia at the same time. The UK didn't show up to save Kurdistan, so let's go. Only one province borders Kurdistan, so all the action will be there. It looks like they depleted their military after the initial battle. With that new territory, we'll just swarm Assyria from all directions. Even after those two invasions, Azerbaijan is still being guaranteed by the United Kingdom. The Russian Empire, who beat the Intermarium, fights Germany because Zeltarosia joined the Third International, making Germany's life a lot more difficult. I'm going to end the video here. Definitely one of the more darker paths I played through in Red Flood. Pretty crazy, even though the world itself is pretty radical in of itself. If you enjoyed the mod, make sure to check it out in the description below. If you enjoyed the video somehow, make sure to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you want, and have an awesome day. I'll see y'all later.